What's up guys, today we're looking at blue belt mistakes. There's a ton of teaching opportunities because these guys overall know what they're doing, but make some minor technical and tactical mistakes that you can learn from. Whether it be standing or on the ground, we're always looking for inside position. That's what they're both grip fighting for. Inside position is what allows Daniel to shoot for the single leg successfully. So what is inside position? Take a look right here. Notice how Daniel, who's in the white, has both his arms on the inside of Alexi's this creates a clear and unobstructed path to the takedown. Daniel should try to keep his shoulder glued to Alexi's hip, as the more distance there is, the harder it is to finish the takedown. You can see all that space as Alexi lifts his arm, but Daniel fixes the issue as he switches to the double leg. I don't like shooting to the far side hip because it really leaves you vulnerable to the guillotine, but Daniel adjusts nicely by bringing his knee in front of Alexi. Now it would be hard to finish, so Alexi makes the right choice by abandoning it. Alexi should try to push Daniel's left foot off of his hip because that's what's controlling his hips. Instead, he just watches Daniel try to take an outside heel hook or an ankle lock and hope for the best. He'd be wise to push the foot and try to scoot his hips in front of it. Lucky for him though, Daniel doesn't have a deep and tight grip, so as he goes to extend, he loses the foot and Alexi is free without having to do any work for himself. These guys both had decent leg locks, I don't think I even learned how to do a heel hook until I was a brown belt. The times are definitely changing, just like any submission, you have to be responsible and that really comes down to gym culture. Alexi is doing a good job of hiding his heel from Daniel by using his other foot to disrupt him, especially when he crosses his feet like this. They enter into a scramble and Daniel should really be controlling Alexi's legs, keeping his feet in the air and off the mats to stop Alexi from coming up. Why let him up? This is a tactical error and Daniel loses the next wrestling exchange and ends up in a bad position. Top position is king. Stay on top. Don't let people up. It's literally as easy as just grabbing the legs. Daniel shoots for the single and Alexi should try and take an underhook with his left arm and try to raise Daniel up with it, bringing him further from his hips. He loses the opportunity and attacks the Kimura as a counter, which is great too. If you've seen my Kimura trap video, you'll know that this is a great counter to the single leg. Alexi ends up on the bottom, which isn't bad, but it isn't as ideal as being on top or in the Kimura trap position where you can take the back or come up for the Kimura. This is really nice work from Alexi and beautiful creativity and awareness of how to use his body weight to flip Daniel over and take his back. I really like the Kimura seatbelt grip which Alexi has. I'm not sure why he switches to the two hands on Daniel's arm. There's no advantage to that and it's an inferior grip. I'd rather him be working the Kimura seatbelt grip to attack arm bars and triangles or the straight jacket system to trap Daniel's arms with his legs, which I go over in detail in the blue belt smash videos. You really need a clear objective to attack, which Alexi is lacking right now. He's in the perfect position to swing his leg over for the Kimura grip armbar right now, but Daniel takes away the opportunity by bringing his back to the mat before Alexi can. Now the attack and position is lost and he's best off just to come up to mount, which he does. The mistake Alexi makes is committing both hands to Daniel's head. Now he can't post and Daniel reverses the position with a bridge and roll escape. Such a small and simple error cost him a really good position. One hand on the head with the other basing out would have been great or neither hands grabbing the head and his hips down would have prevented that as well. Alexi's working his half guard K guard entry which I go over in my BJJ Fanatics instructional. Make sure to pick that up if you haven't already. The mistake that Alexi is going to make is that he's not committing enough to either the knee bar or the heel hook. He kind of just hangs out and lets his head get grabbed and as a result starts getting smashed. He could commit more to the heel hook by flaring his right knee out which would control Daniel's hips and prevent him from coming up on top. Alternatively, he could tuck his head and get under Daniel more for the knee bar. If your head is grabbed when attempting a leg lock, you can't go into a ball to off balance your opponent, you'll be flattened out and weak from here. This is exactly what happens to Alexi. Daniel should lower his butt and widen his left knee to flatten Alexi out even more and start working dope mount like I do here. I have a dedicated video to dope mount that you should check out. His butt is way too high. He wants to bring his right knee to Alexi's hip for dope mount, but Alexi's arm is in the way. He could lift it up with his right arm to get it out of the way, but he doesn't. Alexi tries to sneak his arm in there to make space, but now his hand is trapped. He's giving Daniel the opportunity for an arm triangle. But since he manages to regard, it's no longer a threat. This is a sloppy attempt to mount because look at all the space that's created. This gives Alexi a ton of room to counter and he does by throwing his leg over for the reap. <laughs> I told these guys beforehand that there's two rules. Make it exciting and don't hurt each other. No 
Luckily, Daniel was okay, and it was just his ankle that had a slight pop rather than the knee. Depending on where you have the pressure on an outside heel hook, it can go to your ankle rather than your knee, which is way better for Daniel, and he's lucky he didn't hurt his knee. A knee injury is way worse than an ankle injury. Don't hold out on heel hooks or any submission. Daniel should have tapped way earlier. You feel invincible when you're young, but as you get older, you'll regret it as needless injuries catch up with you. And Daniel gets to work right away to avenge getting submitted as he drops down for the ankle lock. This time it's much tighter and deeper, he adjusted well. Alexi didn't though, as he's still not working to push the heel off of his hip. I want to feature more roles of not just me rolling, what would you like to see? Purple on purple, white on white, or more blue on blue? You know, let me know. Daniel shouldn't be as concerned with Alexi's hands as he should be with his legs. His legs are his guard. Without control of his legs, he can stand up or enter into more favorable guards. Daniel ends up in Alexi's knee shield, and a great counter to the knee shield is the arm weave pass, but it's much better in gi because you can do it in more of a slow grind. And Daniel leaves his elbow way too open, which makes him susceptible to the Kimura. He should have kept his elbows tucked or at least had some awareness of the threat. He should have postured up before Alexi could secure his grip but he didn't and now he's in a world of trouble as Alexi spins through for that beautiful back take. Alexi needs to work on his back control. As you can see, Daniel does the exact same counter as before. By bringing his back to the mat, there's no room to swing the leg over for the armbar. Daniel basically has two choices from here. As Alexi tries to mount him, he can either try to win top position for himself or try to regard as he does. He chooses to try to take top position, which would have a higher payoff but more risk. Ultimately, he chose wrong as he ends up mounted. Look at how Lexi adjusted this time, he's only committing one hand to the head and the other is posting out. Daniel could drop his left elbow to his left hip to hip escape as Alexi is leaving a lot of space for the escape. Instead he tries to bridge and roll but Alexi displays some powerful hip and core strength to bring Daniel right back down. I'm just going to do a quick fast forward just because not much is happening. Daniel's able to escape here because he gets Alexi's hips up just enough to get his knee in, similar to a kipping escape. The year's 2022 and leg locks are all the rage, so of course Daniel goes for a leg lock, but he leaves his left foot for the taking in the process. He should have kept it hidden under Lexi's thigh. This time Daniel's a little wiser and taps early. Notice how Lexi doesn't crank it either. He gives him time to tap like the good training partner he is. I want to say a big thank you to all my patrons who support the channel. I seriously can't thank you guys enough. You guys are awesome. Thanks for sticking around until the end of the video. If you're still here, please leave a comment or a fist bump and I'll see you guys next time.